G'day. Some years ago I read an account of two youngsters, two teenagers in the United States who made a bit of a, a let's say, an immoral living selling dice to gamblers. Apparently, if the story's to be believed, they would set up a table, not unlike this one, and roll dice until someone passing by would stop and ask what was happening. And they would get the man to roll dice until he rolled a five and a six. I was rather hoping one would come up. This is all random, of course. Now we can speed up the process by putting a five and a six together. So we've got five and six together and five and six on top. A couple of quick taps. They're now aligned. And from now on, almost every time I roll, I'm going to get a six or a five, or the numbers on top will add, add up to six or five. So let's see how this works. There's a hit, that's five. There's another hit. Oh, there's our six and five. There's another hit, a five. There's a six. That's another hit. And another one. And another one. And another one. That's a miss. There's another hit. Would you like to know the secret behind these dice? Let's do it just a couple more times. There's another hit. That is a miss. So it does miss occasionally, but a lot more hits than misses. So what do you think of that? If you like it, go away and practice. If you'd like to know the secret, then wait and listen and I'll tell you. Well, if you've waited this long into the video, you're curious to know what the secret is uh, with the two dice. And yes, you're quite right, there's no magic, there's no magnetism or alignment at all. Here's how we analyse the problem. One way that statisticians or, or probabilists or mathematicians uh, analyse probability is to draw trees so we can actually follow a line of, of events following one after another. Another is that we draw a table or a grid which I'm going to draw. And I'm going to draw six columns because I'm going to try and keep track of what happens on the two uh, separate dice. If they were different colours, it would be easier to watch whether we had a six on the, let's say, a, a blue one and two on a red one or vice versa. So I'm going to mark them as die number one and die number two. Now, does it matter whether you have the one here and the two here or vice versa? Not at all. Really doesn't matter. And we're going to try and keep track of what combinations we get when we roll them. Now this is particularly potent because the probability of getting any of the numbers is equal. So the probability of getting a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, or a six on the first die, quite random and quite equal probabilities. And the same with the second one. So for example, the probability of getting a 4 with the first die and a 6 with the second one is exactly the same, we represent it with this box here, and it's exactly the same as the probability of getting a 1 and a 5, or a 3 and a 1. And we can track what combinations. I think you can see with 6 columns and 6 rows there are 36 possible combinations that can be rolled, and they're all equal. So the probability of getting a 5 or a 6, or a total of 5 or 6, would be what? And by the way, we like to write our probabilities, probability and explain. It's probably not explained very well there, but we try and explain what event we're studying. What's the probability? Well, it's going to be out of 36 possibilities. How many of them are going to come up in favour of what we want? 
Well, if you look carefully, on die number one, for the six to roll up, there are going to be these six possibilities. You can roll up with the one on the other die, or the two, or the three, or the four, but on all these, in all these boxes, uh, they represent rolling the six on die one, and rolling the five on die one. But we could equally have rolled the six with die number two, or the five with die number two. And you can see that already there are quite a lot of combinations going to come up. Uh, in fact, if we count them up, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, that's more than half. So more than half the time that you roll a pair of dice, you'll get at least one five or one six on average. That's extraordinary, at least half the time. And you might try it. It works with any dice. They don't have to be magnetised. No trick dice. It just happens. Not only that, we talked about the possibility that they added up to five or six. Well, that involves a few of these in here. What would I add to four to get five or six? Well, I could have a four and a one, or a four and a two. They would be acceptable rolls. A three and two, or three and three, would give me a five or a six. A two and a three, or a two and a four, would give me a five or a six. And a one and a four would give me a five. Now, all the other ones that I've left blank would be misses. You notice here we have a four and a four would give eight. Four and three is seven. Uh, two and one is three, and one one is two, and so on. They miss. But all these are hits. Now, we've already calculated there were 20 of these. 22, 24, 26, 27. There are 27 possible combinations that we would consider a hit. And since both of these are divisible by 9, you can see that the probability is 3 quarters. So 3 quarters of the rolls that we give would pop up being a 6 or a 5, or totalling a 6 or a 5. <clears throat> now, people don't normally, when they're focusing on something else, like focusing on rolling an 11, they're not necessarily counting all these things and not noticing. But once you say, ah, we've now got the 11 and they're synchronised or aligned or magnetised, whatever word you want to use, then they notice. But you don't want to draw your, their attention too much to the combinations themselves which is why when I rolled them, I was calling them a hit and a miss. Because if people start to analyse too much, they might start to realise what's going on. But you just call it a hit and a miss, and they think, boy, I'm getting lots of hits. And uh, I will let you in on a little secret. That was about the video that I put up and posted. Uh, was about the fourth one, I think, that I took. Because I wanted the rolls to come up a little more frequently than three quarters of the time. And the others came up about that, or a little bit less. I think one of them came up about 50-50, hits and misses. And I wanted it to be a bit, look a bit more convincing. So I was a bit mischievous, so I recorded the entire preamble and the, and the, um, the challenge, if you like, all in one take. But it was about the, oh, the third or fourth take before I was satisfied. But there it is. You can try it yourself. It works the same before you align the dice, just the same as it is afterwards. It's all just random probability. Quite incredible. Intriguing. But mischievous nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for watching this far and I hope you appreciated the explanation. Please click the like button, leave a comment, Subscribe if you're not a subscriber and thank you for watching.